Ben Makowitz is here, Turner Classic Movies in the house. What is going on? Man, I'm look I've been looking forward to talking to you for a while. I just started following you on Twitter. I sent right. you a tweet. Good. There's a lot of politics in there. There's a lot of sports in there. So you got to wade through it if you want to just get to the movie stuff. Well, I, I, that was really what caught my attention was like the fact that you write gambling and then later like, and I like gambling because <laughs> off the record, I'm a fan of the sport as well. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a good time to be a gambler or right now in yeah. March, or a horrible time, depending on how you want to look at it. My, uh, my other favorite tweet that you did uh, was, uh, if you don't get Peyton Manning, Matt Leinart is now a uh, free <laughs> right. agent. Matt, Matt Leinart now available to all teams who don't get Peyton Manning. Oh, it's very exciting. Yeah, it's because great. we're in Houston. That's right, that's right. And yeah. Matt Leinart, of course, here, we're, we were actually glad to see him go. So What did he do? He threw one pass? He started a game before he got hurt, too? And he hung out in hotel lobbies. We right? met him uh, downtown at a hotel, just doing really? the Matt Liner thing. Okay. Not a fan. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is exciting. It's the uh, Turner Classic Movies, the TCM Classic Film Festival, happening in April there at the Roosevelt uh, in Hollywood. Yeah. And so right now you're on a tour across the country, yeah. showing some of the movies that will be shown at the festival. Um, you know, I don't know whether the movies themselves will be shown at the festival because I don't, I haven't looked at the full list and thought about it in connection with this, but the idea is um, certainly some of these movies were, and some that we showed last year were mm -hmm. actually shown at the festival, so that's probably true. But the idea is that not everybody can get to this festival, obviously. It's in Los Angeles and it's, it can be expensive for people. So we're just trying to sort of bring what the festival is, a little slice of the festival, to as many people around the country as we possibly can. Going to 10, 12 cities, Houston being one of them, you know, with a big star and a big movie, you know, like even Marie Saint and On the Waterfront, and let people have an idea of what the festival's like, which is, is, is a big theater, seeing this movie on the big screen with hundreds, maybe thousands, depending on the theater, of people who feel just as passionately about it as you do, and 30 minutes with a great star like Eva Marie, and you can hear her thoughts on the movie and her career, and it's that kind of experience that you get at the festival. The, I have not heard anyone, literally, who's gone to our festival criticize it in any way, except say, I needed to get to more movies, I had too many difficult choices to make. You uh, are going to be with somebody coming up in Chicago that I am extremely jealous that you're going to meet her. I'm talking, she's of course, total, about... She's a total fox, too. Tippi Hedren. Still, yeah. Dude, The Birds, honestly, is top five for me of yeah. all time. It's just a great movie. Well, you, if you ever have an opportunity to see her in person, she is so honest about her experiences with Hitchcock because he was tough on her and he really wrecked her career. But she also knows that he made her career and she is really candid. She is incredibly appreciative of the work that he did for her and his brilliance. Uh, and she says he was the greatest acting teacher you could ever have. But he was obsessed with her and wouldn't let her out of her contract and kept her from working in other movies while not casting her in anything. So, you know, and that's the kind of sort of honesty that, yeah, I don't know, you don't, you don't get that a lot. You don't, you don't get a sort of a, you don't get a cliched answer from Tippi Hedren. You know, I, I love hearing that story because it's so authentic and it makes it come alive. But another name, Ernest Borgnine, you're going to be with Ernest. And have you met, have you spent some time with yeah, Ernest before? Yeah, I have, yeah. Okay, well, let's, we got to talk about Ernest. I have a, a card on my refrigerator. I have one card. You know, I, I meet, I don't meet a lot of celebrities, but I meet some classic stars and, and they're all great. And even Marie is a delight and a pistol. And, but uh, I got one card in my life and it's from, it's from Ernest Borgnine. And he, it was after we did uh, an event for last year's Road to Hollywood. And we did From Here to Eternity. And he sent me a card afterwards. It was like, Ben, I, you know, these interviews can sometimes be so boring. And I felt like ours was just alive and fresh and fun. And I hope it's the beginning of a friendship. And I'd love to have you over to the house sometime. And I was like, you know, I was like running around. I called, so I'm like, I just got the card inside my refrigerator, and Ernie. It's so great. He's oh. such a great guy. He's such a, like, decent, warm guy. I've been playing a lot of softball. Last year when I, I talked to him, and I slid, and I hurt my ankle, and I'm, like, hobbling the day after. He's 94 years old. We got to the wrong theater, right? Mm -hmm. We had to go across the street in Hollywood. And he, I, again, it seems like a fake story. I can't keep up with him. I'm limping. He's 95. He's, like, jogging across the street, hold up traffic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He's a blast, man. He's the best. What what kind of, uh, I can see it in your face, the way you're describing these legendary, classic, real Hollywood stars when Hollywood, Hollywood's still big, but, you know, we've got the Brad Pitts of the world, Tom Cruise's, there's only just a few that are just mega stars. Right, yeah. The, that era, from that era, that golden era of Hollywood, uh, 
it's just got to be a, a thrill for you to meet some of these people and spend some time with these legends that started it all, really. It's a great thrill. It's an honor, and I'm so lucky. But, and, and you can see that, that almost anyone would feel that it was an honor because, like, at these events, like tonight in Houston with Eve Marie, you'll see a reaction to her that's just different than any. I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge any of those stars you mentioned. You know, you, Tom Cruise is a movie star. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and Clooney and Brad Pitt, the, whatever era they were in, they would have handled. They'd have been big stars in the 20s, they'd have been big stars in the 30s. But there's something about if a, a star today doesn't get the same kind of, it, the same sort of passion. These people aren't just thrilled to see him. It means something. When, when, when Ernest Borgnine came out, the last event I did with him, there are people <laughs> welling up. These aren't crazy people. These are people with uh, kids and, and, and grandkids and parents and uh, obligations in life. And they took this moment out and seeing, you know, the star of Marty, seeing Marty. Yeah. That just, it moves them. It means something to them. And, and that's a, that, that speaks to what this era, this sort of vast era of classic Hollywood, uh, what it means to, to so many millions of Americans. Uh, one of the movie that won Best Picture, which I agreed with completely, by the way, it was one of my favorites of 2011, was, uh, of course, The Artist, paying homage to uh, the, the days of, of Hollywood, you know, past. Also, to a certain extent, Hugo, which was kind of a movie. Oh, certainly. Movie. I don't think, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Uh, do you think that there's like a resurgence, or, or was that just, a, you know, The Artist did really well, and hey, we had Hollywood, you know, saluted itself, it won the Oscar. Well, Hollywood, you know, the town, the, the folks who make movies, they... they and many of the decision makers, they, they want to remind, they don't like to disassociate, disassociate themselves too much from that era. So I think there'll always be some sort of connection. It makes them feel good to remind them that, uh, that they're born out of an era that produced Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and Douglas Fairbanks and Errol Flynn. They, they want a connection to that. Um, but no, I don't think we're about to see a I don't think we're about to see a crazy, silent <laughs> craze. <laughs> okay. I don't see that happening, no. <laughs> yeah, remember those talkies and we go back to the... <laughs> right, exactly. yeah, yeah, that. I, don't, I don't see that. I've got to ask you the obvious question, Ben. Sure. Um, I don't even know what the obvious question is. It is, and you probably answered it a million times. But just if you could name just a couple of your favorite movies of all time. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, you know, look, I, I, I get moved by Casablanca every time I see it. Um, uh, I get, uh, you know, I just introduced uh, over the weekend... Um, at the San Luis Obispo Film Festival, the first ever screening of Citizen Kane at Hearst Castle. It's a big deal. The William Randolph Hearst family sort of acquiesced finally to letting the movie be shown there on the property. It was big, two sold out screenings, and they asked me to introduce it. My grandfather, of course, wrote Citizen Kane and was, was part of the, the story beyond Citizen Kane and the fight between Orson Welles and William Randolph Hearst to get the movie made. And it was a great, great experience. So certainly I'd have to say Citizen Kane. Then you get more recently, I mean, there's this Hell is for Heroes, but one of my favorite war movies, Steve McQueen, Bob Newhart. It's a great, great, sort of unfairly unsung war movie directed by Don Siegel. Um, it really depends on what I've seen most recently, that sort of impacts thing. I just saw Rafifi, which maybe I'd been mispronouncing all my life as Rafifi. Uh, that may be more correct. You know, I, I'd seen it 10, 15 years ago. I see it again, and yeah. oh my God, it was so good. And then I see an interview with Jules Dassin afterwards on, on the on the DVD, and it was, and I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I need more. I have to see every movie that he's made right now in the next right. four days. Um, but then you get, uh, you know, the movie in my life that I have felt the best about when I left the theater, that I thought, this is why you go to movies. Uh, you know, it stars uh, Jennifer Lopez. So is that for real? Yeah, really. Yeah, you want to take a shot at it? Uh, it's not made in Manhattan. It is made in Manhattan. It is made in Manhattan. It's not made in Manhattan. What are you out of your mind? Come on, <laughs> all right, all right, out of sight. Um, you know, Clooney and uh, and Jennifer Lopez and uh, uh, you know Steve Soder Steven Soderbergh and uh, Steve Zahn is so great in it. Ving Rhames is so Don Cheadle was my first real exposure to Don Cheadle. Um, that's a great, great film, you know. And uh, again, anchored by, and also it was before she was JLo. She was, she's great in it. Dennis yeah. Farina, Dennis Farina's in it, plays her dad. Michael Keaton's in it. It's a great movie. Um, you know, so uh, there's a temptation too when we do these classic Hollywood things, you know, somebody will say, oh my God, the movie's today, and you see them. There's a, lo there's a lot of ridiculous stuff today. We blow up a lot of stuff. I, the Transformers movies are a little unwatchable to me, but there's great films being made, mm -hmm. you know, um, still. 
uh, story, you know, where it's about sort of story and character. Um, yeah, I mean, not every movie, again, is, you know, uh, has to be uh, where we, you know, uh, blow up a tank. You almost, uh, I mean, this, you're doing something you love and you can, you can tell, uh, but your family, you, you mentioned your grandfather a second ago, but you almost, you grew up. You know. Yeah, I grew up around politics, actually. You know, my father was sort of not in the family business, and you know, my father was sort of Bobby Kennedy's press secretary, ran George McGovern's campaign, uh, president of National Public Radio. So I, I, I grew up much more around that. I grew up in D.C. So it took me a while. Uh, um, you know, I, I didn't feel real connected to the Hollywood part of the family until really I went to college when I started to started to grow on me, and then you know, moving to Los Angeles, it sort of so so some of this did come late. Everybody always asks if it's in my blood, but I, I don't know, you know, I, I, but I'm grateful for it. And, and, and the more I, I learned about my family, the more I, I'm impressed. I, I have, have, you been, have you been to the White House? You know, I've never, I think maybe I took a tour. I don't know. You know, I, I'm like, one. you know, you, you grow up in a place where that stuff's always available. You don't go because you can always go tomorrow. And then the end, and then all of a sudden you've never been. Mm -hmm. So, uh. But uh, yeah, I grew up around politics. I still care very deeply about politics. Uh, and uh, but you know, politics, movies, baseball, <laughs> gambling. What else is that? <laughs> Girls. Sorry. Have you <laughs> seen Game Change? This is completely different. I wouldn't uh, bring this up. No, I didn't see Game Change because I was uh, traveling. I guess the night it uh, premiered. And uh, it's but, interesting. But no, I read a lot of stuff about it. It looks like it was pretty good. It was based on a you know serious book there by uh, Mark Halpern and his partner. And uh, you know, so uh, it was good. I did. Uh, um, nor did I see. Um, undefeated, which was the, oh, it's fantastic. The the the, yeah. the, 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 the Palin documentary. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's fantastic, really. Uh, well, actually, wait a minute. I'm thinking of something else. No, you think you're thinking of something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's a critic in the world who thinks it's fantastic. No, no, no. I, did, movie, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I know it doesn't sound like that's what it would be about, but that also premiered on the same night on uh, I think Reels Channel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, listen. I think it's great that you guys are doing this, um, taking you know that part of Hollywood around the country and letting people experience something that we just don't get a chance to really. These artists or these actors and actresses are older now, and you know to get them to go and do something like this, it's it's tough to do. So the fact that you guys have brought it to the different cities across America, I think is fantastic. No, That's it's, really cool. It's, it's, I'm, it's, I'm really lucky. Really lucky. And do me a favor, dude, when you're with Tippy. Have you met Tippy before? Oh, yeah, but 10 or 11. I've, I've went on a date with Tippy. Dude, you went on a date with Tippy Hedren? Yeah, sort of. Like she, 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 well, I went to the Academy's night honoring Sophia Loren, and I was her escort. And we were like, yeah, man, we were out till, you know, 1 in the morning. We went, she's awesome. Tippy's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Ben, thank you so much, man. Appreciate right, it. Right. Awesome, thank dude. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.